and more so those in the administrative position of the, of the school. Being a big institution, having more than 6,000 students, it's not humanly impossible to be meeting parents every day. But surely we do meet them through appointments if a mail is sent to the, to the concerned secretaries for any reason that you would want to, to meet us. So just an introduction so that you, as parents, first time parents and those who have been here, recognize and know who, who's who of this, uh, of the Bishop's Courts of Bundi. So we start with the principal, that's Mr. Julian Lu, there in, in the picture you can see him, and also standing here in front of him. So I am heading this, this institution along with with the able guidance and, and help of my, my administrative staff, followed by the headmaster, Mr. Ralph Rasan. Mr. Rasan looks after standing 6 to 10. He's housed in building B3. But I'm sure when your children reach that, those classes will be more in touch with Mr. Mr. Fernandez. The supervisor, Mrs. Fernandez, you see her there in the picture, also seated here in front of you. You may trouble the, when we have the Q&A session. And uh, any problems that you have which, which our teachers cannot solve, you are always free to meet her with prior appointment. We don't expect it, all our parents to be landing up in her office and lining up over there. Then we have the junior college coordinator, Dr. Rupal Bey. Dr. Bey looks after standard 11 and 12, the junior college. We have the senior administrative coordinator, Mr. Sheila Thorian. On my extreme right, she looks after standard 9 and 10. And uh, Mrs. Alpana Kandilwal, who looks after class 6 to class 8. We have a school psychologist, Dr. Y. Singh, also present here, will be addressing you just after this, this introductory introduction of all our. Our teacher, Dr. Singh, is only available on, on Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1.35 p.m. in the Sparkle's office that is in Building B3. That also, if you wish to meet her on a personal basis because of some reason, then also you need to take an appointment, am I right? We have our school doctor, Dr. Supriya Narlewa, who is also present here. Dr. Narayan is present every day between 9 to 11 in building B2 in our school in February. Then we have the class teachers for class 1A and also the class coordinator, Mrs. Bhak Resha Kaspe, and uh, assisted by Mrs. Kerry and Devi. For class 1B, we have Mrs. Savita Pillay and assisted by uh, Mrs. Veronica Patole. For class 1C, we have Mrs. Hazel Dagan as class teacher and assisted by Ms. Apurva Sonalani. For class 1D, we have Mrs. Gina Saikya assisted by Mrs. Patricia Rafana. For class 1E, we have Mrs. Meenal Pillay, assisted by Ms. Carol Brodick. For class 1F, we have Mrs. Roshni Hake, assisted by Mrs. Shireen Francis. For class, class 1G, for class teacher, we have Mrs. Billy Lobo, assisted by Ms. Elisa Souza. For class 1H, we have Mrs. Jasmine Anchan, assisted by Mr. Matthew D. Moore. And for class 1I, we have Mrs. Priya Ganesha, assisted by Mrs. Amanda Ramira. For class 2A, class teacher and class coordinator, Ms. Alpana Vanjari. Class 2B, Mrs. Jill Bergia. For 
zástupci, to jsou z Jinašek, zástupci Turdy, to jste přestupoval na Moraj, pokládku I, to jsou Elizabet Katarče, pokládku F, to jsou Rudy Handal Rauker, pokládku G, to jsou Rudy Bell, Kami di sini juga ada pelajar dalam negeri kita pasang je. Class two age, Mr. Diasha, and class two I, Mr. Cheryl Matthew, who is currently replacing Mr. Roma Masgita, who is on maternity leave. The subject teachers, for Hindi, we have Mrs. Swati Pawar. Mrs. Manisha Malpure, Mrs. Veronica Kasuza, Mrs. Aim Lata Som, and Mrs. Doreen Talakeri. For Marathi, we have Mrs. Manisha Gadekar, and Mrs. Urmila Mahalira. For computers, we have Mrs. Azmita Padura and Mrs. Margaret Mary. For music, we have Mrs. Blossom Simoy and Mr. K. Chao Mingliana. For art and craft, we have Mrs. Amruta Dalekar. Our counselor, Mrs. Dipali Chakranaray, for both the morning and the afternoon shift. Our immediate educator, Mrs. Pritam Rao. Our librarian, Mr. Benedict David. And our cricket academy and sporting fit is looked after by Mr. Ashutosh Mandavi. Our second shift staff, that is for the afternoon, the junior administrative coordinator over there, Mrs. Manju Mary, and uh, Mr. Greg Godfrey. For class 1A, last teacher, we have Mrs. Ms. Neha Bhalera, assisted by Ms. Mrs. Yogi Tata. For 1B, we have Mrs. Shutrika Karan, assisted by Mrs. Karishpan Nampal. And for class 2A, we have Mrs. Sarina Thayil. The subject teachers, in Hindi, we have Mrs. Pooja Kamate and Mrs. A. Khilare. Computers, Mrs. Triveni Dharan Parwa. For Marathi, we have Mrs. Komal Paul. For music, we have Ms. Ruth Jory Cornelius. For art and craft, we have Mr. Nilesh Karnade. Remedial educator, Ms. Stuti Sarve. And for sporty fit, Mr. Ashutosh Mandal. Moving on to the next point of agenda, we now have our address by our school psychologist, Dr. Yadyoti Singh, who will give you an insight on, on the physical and mental development of, of your child and also good parenting tips, which you can always find useful, especially when dealing with your children at home. Dr. Weiss. processes in the body. For example, your child has now reached pre-operational cognitive development, which is a phase where abstract thinking 
has not yet settled, but logical thinking, sequencing, they have got over object permanence, they have got over all these basic concepts. Now they can actually compare with the more logical sequencing. They can start reasoning and analyzing and their basic cognitive levels have increased. So you suddenly find them giving a lot of wisdom to you and you kind of feel that there is so much of it. And of course, since the brain is still developing, they are going to be absolutely impulsive and become baby-like again. But cognitively, remember that the growth spurt, the first five years was about 75%. Age six is still important, it's continuing. Consolidating what has happened in the first five years is the task of the next two, three years. The brain works in a manner where it is use it or lose it. The more you challenge the brain, the more you do activities, the more the child is going to be in touch. In fact, that's applicable to all of us the better the brain is going to be. So therefore, the challenge part of the brain comes up with not just academics, though academics becomes one huge chunk of their cognitive development. Challenging them is still giving them some kind of puzzles, blocks, which are beyond their age, one year beyond their age, so they feel stimulated. Cognitive Challenge is still discussing with them about things, getting them to be curious and answering all their questions, which now, believe me, are going to become pretty shocking. Don't evade questions, don't try giving baby like answers. Children today are smarter, and you need to be more upfront and honest with them. When it comes to the social emotional development, they have now entered this phase which is called industry versus inferiority. Every human span has a task and that task needs to be fulfilled for us to smoothly move on to the next task and that is what is life till the day we die. At every stage there is a task and that keeps us having a purpose. You know, if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have a task to do, then the quality of life is not uh, fulfilled. So at this point, what is their purpose? What is their task? It is to feel industrious. How does a child feel industrious? It is getting validated, feeling happy and accomplished. The accomplishment is going to come through stars, completing work, learning a new concept, being able to answer something in class or at home or doing well in assessments. Being very careful here of not making this the only industrious experience because some children don't manage to cope as well, which is fine. So find other ways in which they can be industrious and this is the time where a lot of racket games begin, a lot of table games begin, a lot of sports introductions happens to a large extent. The child is going to keep fleeting from different hobbies, allow that. This is an exploration phase. So don't say that, you know, look, my child has started tennis, so must continue. Might go on to badminton, TT, whatever it is. Introduce them definitely to music because it helps with brain synaptic connections. It kind of becomes a go-to place for them as they advance in life. When it comes to moral development, they are at this stage where it is called the pre-formal conventional stage. Where the child is still imbibed, not with any kind of decisions based on his own analytical thinking, but depending on rewards and punishment. A good and bad thing for him or her is based on, am I going to get punished for it? Then I better not do it, that's not right. Am I going to get reward for it? I'm going to be encouraged to do it. As this progresses, by the end of seven years, as they enter eight, nine, they move on to the next phase. So at this phase, do not think your child is being self-centered you know, self and selfish. It's part of their development. They have entered now socially into the phase of pure recognition. Then out of that parallel play or just, you know, being egocentric here where friends are concerned. For the first time they're stepping into acknowledging that I have a best friend, I have a friend or I want a friend, though it's still not a private. They'd rather spend time with you than spend it with friends if they're extended times. Unlike what's going to happen later on in life. So parents, you can still capitalize on this huge phase where you all are still number one role influencers. 
they are also at this phase of life where because they can process and understand because they are completely equipped with vocab, understanding words, communications, they don't understand sophisticated nuances of communication because of which a lot of times information they hear, they take it at face value and they believe everything that's being said. Great and not so great. Not so great because sometimes you might say things in anger and those they take it literally. And this is the time where they don't feel industrious versus inferiority. Which means the flip side of not feeling industrious is feeling inferior. This is the base phase of the life for forming a good self-esteem. Research has shown that in the past, anyone who's had very validating experiences or feels good, good doesn't mean successful, but feels that he or she is validated, feel worth being around. All their life, their basic self-esteem is going to be much better. The next two, three years, in fact, are very important for that. And the biggest contributory factors here are your followed by school and relatives, etc. How do you validate your child, praise your child, still continue hugging your child, still find things to, you know, kind of acknowledge that they have done, rather than picking on behaviors which they're not doing well, which believe me is going to happen through the day. The minute your child wakes up, to the minute your child sleeps, to the point he sleeps, what are we doing instructionally? Get up, the bus is here, have your breakfast, have your milk, no this, and it goes on and on and on. And then suddenly when they're fast asleep, you see their angelic faces and say, there's a surge of love and oxytocin which comes up and you say, oh my god, I really love them. Through the day, they're devils, they're monsters, and that's the impression you're giving them. They carry that. They don't understand that you mean well. So say, be patient. Appreciate even once if they've had a bath fast or they've had it on their own. Find little, little things to praise. Our whole focus becomes academics, which is important. But even for that, there is a time limit of the day. Academics doesn't become a waking 24 hour process in their lives. You have to now start taking their academics seriously because how you are going to take it is going to be how they are going to take it. So for you not to have absentism with them, not to even take them out for functions, superseding school is all going to help them prioritize the importance of studies. Regular work is going to be the key for having any kind of stability in academics. Giving the child practice but appropriate practice. Gauge where your child is. The worksheets, the work, the writing, big jump. Timings have increased. But so is your child's physical ability to deal with the timing. This couple of weeks, this period of these first two months is going to be difficult because the child is transitioning into not sleeping in the afternoon as much, etc. Or the meal times are going to change. But they get conditioned. So be consistent. They still need about 9 hours of sleep and it should preferably be only night time sleep now. Do away with the afternoon sleep. There have to be times for play and that must be at least 1 hour of evening time which is not to be with study time or tuitions. The concept of tuitions at this age should be redundant. If they just follow what's happening in school, they will not need any other extra support. If y'all are going to be regular with them and take up again another half an hour more of oral work towards bedtime. Reading is still a big task here. Increasing their vocab remains a primary task again. Keep talking to them, expose them to good books, see to it that the media is reduced so that they actually get into the habit of reading, take them out for various outings, expose them to good experiences in the house and definitely do not share your personal problems with them, however mature they seem because they cannot handle it. Any kind of marital discord, any stresses in the house, see to it that they are not exposed to it because this is also the period where maximum anxiety start off. 
and these anxieties build up because they can't process everything that they are hearing. News that they hear. So you have to be careful what news they hear because they could exaggerate it in their mind and not understand. So at this phase, parents, they are still in that babyhood, post-toddlerhood phase. They look and act mature, so we suddenly expect them to be 9 and 10 year olds, they are at an interface. We still need to monitor them, find out how they are growing, they will not express it. Be vigilant because body language talks more and definitely quantity over quality. Unless you spend quantity time with them, quality will not come. Even if you are working parents, see to it that there is a primary adult trustworthy subject in their lives. So happy parenting and we are always here to help you journey through this year. Thank you. The latest hairstyles, that is not permitted, please. And if a child is sent home or parents are called for, please do not take it as an offence. Do not think we are humiliating your child. There is a discipline that we need to inculcate in our students and we do it from our end and we expect the cooperation of the parents also. The diary is a very, very important tool of communication between you as parents teacher as it is a direct contact. If there is anything that a child is not doing in the class, the teacher makes a note of it in the diary. Please ensure that you sign these on a daily basis and at times there are parents who don't read these notes that are sent by the teachers. In spite of calling up parents through MS Teams, through the school office number, sometimes we are unable to contact you. So please be vigilant about that and ensure that you respond to the pair, to the teacher and ensure that you do not make a note in the same diary if you can kindly take an A4 size sheet of paper and mention whatever the issue is to the teacher. Kindly send books according to the timetable and do not send the textbooks to school unless asked for by the class teacher. As you are aware, we have uploaded a textbook schedule which has to be followed by the students on a daily basis so that they do not carry very, very heavy bags to school. In case an additional textbook is required, the teacher will notify the child and will inform them accordingly. Should there be an error in your child's book which might have been an oversight by the teacher, please feel free to correct the same and sign it. Also, if there are errors in the textbooks, kindly inform us about the same. You have to understand that the teacher is correcting so many subjects. As junior school teachers, we have like a teacher teaching almost all the subjects except for Hindi, Marathi and computers. And there could be an oversight that the teacher has just put a tick mark and has not corrected the spelling. Please do not tell the child anything. Just send a small note to the concerned teacher and she will do the need for you. Please do not send your child to school if he or she is sick, particularly when he has a class assessment. I think every year we repeat the statement, but it's unfortunate that during the assessments, we have children coming with chicken pox, coming with fractured hands and legs, coming with various contagious diseases, even sore eyes, and parents requesting us to please take the assessment. Please understand your child's health comes first. The well-being of your child is of utmost importance to us more than the assessment. If he or she has to miss the assessment, do not worry about it. Please note we do not have a format of any retest or requests for any re-examination or assessment in the junior school. This applies to the students of classes 1 to 5. As mentioned, the well-being of your child is a priority and not the assessment. Attendance, sometimes by mistake a teacher would click on the wrong name and an SMS is sent to you saying your child is absent. Please call the office and find out, do not panic. Very often, as I mentioned earlier, there are children who have three or four children who have the same surname or students who have the same first name. By mistake, a teacher clicks on the wrong name and the attendance comes to you. The teachers are noticed by 11 a.m. And in case you know your child is coming to school, please call the office. We will convert immediately. Leave 
applications have to be submitted online. No written hand handwritten applications will be accepted. Doctor's certificate to be uploaded if a child is absent for three or more days. Children having chickenpox or any contagious disease should be kept home for a period of 10 days. If the leave is taken for two or more days, then kindly fill in the leave form on the TBS app. In case you need to apply for long leave, kindly send an email to the supervisor's email ID, which is then forwarded to the principal, as long leave is approved only by sir. However, please remember, no prefixing and suffixing leave to any school declared holiday, especially the Diwali break, the winter break and the summer break. Strictly abide by the reporting time, all students from classes 1 to 5 on the first shift come in by 7.45 and leave by 1.35 and on the second shift come in by 12 p.m. and leave by 5 p.m. Should any child arrive late, the gates will be locked and the child will not be allowed to enter school. However, sometimes we do have general cases where a vehicle has broken down or some kind of thing has happened, we do allow children to come in. As mentioned, no prefixing or suffixing of leave to any school declared holidays. Kindly advise and discourage your child from using bad language. Very often, our children don't know the meanings of many of the words. They would have heard it from the friends they mingle with in their societies or elsewhere, or they have heard it from another child in school, and they repeat the same. Please discourage them and help them understand what is right from wrong. No complaining or criticizing the teachers. As you are aware, we have a very transparent format. If there is any problem or anything that you need to address, you can meet the class teachers on a Friday. If you are not satisfied, you can meet the class coordinator. If you are not satisfied with that, you can meet the administrative coordinator for class nursery to one, it is Mrs. Pillay, and we have Mr. Francis. Similarly, second shift, we have Mrs. Manju Madden and Mr. Godfrey. If not satisfied, you can meet me. I will try to solve the problem as much as I can. If I cannot, then I will refer the same to the principal. Do not unnecessarily or at all demean your child's teacher. As you are aware, as Dr. Singh mentioned, everything that a teacher teaches is the gospel truth for your child. The teacher means the world for your child. You as an adult will criticize or demean or talk about it in front of your child. This will have a negative impact on your child. Your child spends so many hours with that concerned teacher in the class, much more time than he or she spends with you. The influence that he or she has is tremendous. So let it be a positive, a happy experience rather than a negative one. If there's anything, as I mentioned, you need to bring it to a notice. We are approachable at any time. Rumors and gossiping by forming groups on WhatsApp and criticizing the class teacher in front of your board. Please do not hesitate to phone or write for clarifications from the administration. You're most welcome to send an email to the supervisor's ID, that is my email ID, and I will definitely call you in to meet me personally to address the issue. WhatsApp groups are hotlines at the moment. Anything that happens in the class, one comment goes and there will be thousands that will follow. Please ensure that before you type in anything, you verify and check for facts. If there's anything, you can come and meet the class teacher and find out what has happened. But demeaning a teacher, talking about the teachers in general on this group, very often we have parents of the group who come and let us know what is being said about certain teachers of the group. We are aware about what comments are being uh, mentioned over there. Even teachers get to know all this. It is a sad thing. You have put a lot of faith and trust in this institution. And we will try our best to do everything we can to make this journey a happy one. The school and class teacher must be informed if your child has a serious medical problem. Medical reports of the illness should be handed into the school office. Kindly inform your transport and class teacher in advance if you are picking up your child in person. Sometimes sections of children can be changed 
This usually happens with children who are getting this buckle section, or we have changed sections to balance the numbers in the sections. Discipline in private buses. Children sticking, out, sticking their bodies out of the windows to touch passing vehicles, throwing water out of the bus, etc. Please do not demand transport and kindly form a carpool system. Whenever we have big events like the sports day, we have a concert. Please form carpool systems, even our open house days. This is a humble request as we don't have carpool space available. Parents have to caution the van bus drivers to ensure that they drive safely and that no child is left back in the van or bus. Just as the safety of the children is a priority while the children are in school, right from the time they enter our classrooms or the gates of our school till they leave, please ensure that you are entrusting your child with the correct van drivers and bus drivers that they take care of the safety of your children. Any grandparents or relatives coming to collect report cards are required to carry an authority letter signed by the child's parents and are not to act rude or demanding. Also, please ensure you collect the report card on the specified date given to you. We still have a number of report cards that have not been collected by parents over the last academic session. If you have not done so, please do so at the earliest. If you have a problem with a teacher this year, it should be dealt with and not carried over to the next year when the child has left the class. Whatever the issues or problems are addressed at the same time, nip it in the bud, solve it, it's over. When you go, your child goes to the next class, please do not mention it to the next teacher that this is the issue I had with this teacher last year. This is the problem. Not required. What is over is over. Turn over a new leaf, look ahead positively in the new academic session. Please do not approach any towns or so-called leaders for admission for a fee, as this is against our policy and Christian spirit. We do not accept any donation for admissions, and those who approach you are not representing us. As you are aware, the system is a very transparent system. You have applied online, the child has been called for a written test based on his or her performance, purely on a merit term basis, the principal has given your child the admission. So if anyone approaches you saying that please give me so and so amount of money, please know we are not representing us. Parents please know that it is compulsory for students to carry their ID card to school as it is used to mark the attendance of the child. As you are aware, the child swipes the ID card before entering the class. If any of the students don't have the ID card, please apply for the same on the TBS app. You will get a new ID card at the rate of rupees 100. All new students need to submit the original transfer certificate in the school office. If you belong to a certain subcast, a caste certificate is to be submitted and kindly check it with the school office to ensure that it has been updated. If the certificate is not handed in, then the caste will be considered as general by default. Change request after the TC has been issued will not be entertained. It is mandatory for parents to update the school if you have any change in your phone numbers or address as in cases of emergency, the teachers have tried to contact the parents and it is just not possible to get through then we do request the teachers to upload a message on, team, on the MS Teams app that also parents are not checking. Other part must be updated in the child's profile. If you are facing any difficulties in doing so, please contact the office for assistance. Parents, a general request. All gents and ladies are requested to come appropriately dressed to school, especially during the drop or pick up of your child. Kindly ensure that you carry your ID cards also. Parents, as Sir mentioned, you are to know that the counselling and clinical educators for both the shifts are available on a daily basis in the Sparkles Room in Building 3. The school psychologist, that is Dr. Yajoti Singh, will be available to meet parents on Wednesdays through prior appointment only. Finally, you may please feel free to give in any suggestion or anything that is bothering you, please bring it up so that we can address it. At the end of the day, 
please do remember that we are a team. You as parents, the management, the teachers, the support staff, the students, we are all one family. We are here for the well-being of the child. We want your child to blossom in our institution. And we will do our best in every single way to ensure that your child has a happy journey and that the partnership that we share is a fruitful enriching one. God bless you all. Thank you.